good evening everybody and thank you for the opportunity i promise to keep it short and sweet uh, a lot of pet ct in orthopedics is actually the imaging of infection and um, infection is a area unlike the imaging of cancer is an area where nuclear medicine even today plays a very big role and uh, i felt that mo most of this topic is actually something very well um, tailored for my nuclear medicine colleague uh, so in a sense most of this presentation i am just i'll be playing second fiddle so to speak so straight away to uh, come to the uh, to the core of the issue um, what is uh, pet and pet uses uh, is basically positron emission tomography uh, it uses most of the pet that we commonly do uses the fluorodeoxyglucose as the meta as the metabolite uh, basically fluorodeoxyglucose looks like this it is a replica of glucose itself with just a fluorine molecule uh, atom there it goes into the cell the cell thinks it is glucose it takes it inside and it starts it along the glycolytic pathway but it gets trapped because it is not the real glucose and it is the strapped glucose or rather the pseudo glucose in the cell that actually uh, shows up on the pet scan so naturally cells which are hyper metabolic are going to take this up in large amounts and you are going to see it as a bright spot on the pet scan it's as simple as that now the other point i wanted to make is that um, um, cancer is hyper metabolic for two reasons one is that obviously there are lots of cells multiplying there than normal so you have a more glucose being utilized there the other thing we have to understand is normally in our cells the 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 pathway that is used to make energy is uh, the first the glycolytic pathway where the glucose goes down to pyruvate and then after that we completely metabolize pyruvate using the respiratory chain mechanism where ultimately a molecule of glucose just comes out as uh, water and carbon di as carbon dioxide but in uh, in cancer in tumor cells they prefer to stop at glycolysis they don't go into the respiratory chain so glycolysis is a very inefficient way of uh, of using uh, glucose but it means that for the same amount of energy you have to use lot of glucose so that is another reason why uh, tumors uh, appear bright on a pet scan but in when it comes to infection we don't have this advantage we simply is that there is more cells going to that particular spot there's more metabolic activity there it's very simple that is the reason why you it comes out as a bright area okay why pet ct so pet primarily as you can see this image is a very low resolution tool you can hardly make out any anatomical landmarks there so one has to combine it with a very high resolution ct to actually get the information for example if just to give you an example this is a case of lung cancer you see that uh, the ct shows a mass in the left lung but the pet shows the clearly that the mass the tumor is actually only here and the rest of it is just collapsed lung so this is a wonderful way of combining two modalities one giving you exquisite anatomical details and the other one showing you the metabolism to know where a cancer is but i think before we start off on talking about pet it's important to understand that there's been a lot of hype about pet ct and it's important to understand that there are issues one of the problems with pet ct is false positives it's very di it's very difficult to distinguish tumor from infection on pet i mean we can always uh, we it can be done based on the degree or the, by quantifying the the uptake on that but still there is a lot of overlap we must understand that infection and inflammation are something that are very difficult to differentiate then of course there are other issues which are related to uh, cancer imaging like brown fat uh, lymphatic tissue thyroid adenomas these are uh, cancer related problems which tends to be po false positive uh, the other thing is false negative a false negative is also very important especially in cancer because all tumors are not hyper metabolic in that sense so there are several cancers like muc mucinous adenocarcinomas bronchialvular carcinoma there's a, there's a long list let me assure you uh, ca prostate hcc which don't take up pet very well so just because it is not there on pet doesn't mean the tumor is not there another very important thing relevant to orthopedics is that uh, it pet uh, that is fdg pet that is a fluorodeoxyglucose pet is not very sensitive for bone metastasis so in though pet 
is obviously a very sensitive technique for imaging cancer. It's not very good for bone metastasis. I'll come back to that. And of course, not useful for brain because in brain, the brain itself uses so much glucose that you can't make out there's another tumor inside it which is also using glucose. So, brain also there are issues. If you take this uh, case where there is actually a, uh, a, this is a patient with uh, CA lung actually, you find that there is a sacral metastasis here. There's a, a erosion, the osteolytic lesion. There is also an osteoblastic lesion. PET does not show the osteoblastic lesion at all. So that is one issue with PET. In fact, that way the regular bone scan using technetium 99 MDP is much more sensitive for uh, metastasis. In fact, in our institute, when a patient comes for metastasis evaluation, first we do the bone scan and then after a day we do the PET. So this is something we must remember. So especially lesions which are sclerotic, like CA prostate and all that, you can expect that PET will be negative. So, so how to um, override this problem is that uh, for um, uh, if you want to get the same sensitivity as the regular bone scan, you we need to use what is known as fluoride. Fluoride goes to the metastasis very well, so that is one thing. The other thing is this is another thing that is instead of using FDG, you use choline that is uh, labeled with F18. That is uh, supposed to be very good for imaging metastasis from prostate, but these metabolites are not freely available in our country. This is just an image from a textbook showing F18 uh, PET, which looks like our regular uh, bone scan showing multiple metastasis. Okay. Now, this is a classic, uh, it's a PET image and uh, a sagittal image and then you see that there is a lesion in the, um, in the thoracic vertebrae and there is, of course, the primary tumor in the rectum. But uh, obviously, so what is the, uh, this is simply a tumor or the metastasis. But actually, in this patient, when uh, you know you image it, you realize that this uh, you have a, a pet uptake over there also. Very clearly, you can see the bright signal there. But this is turned out to be just uh, vertebral osteomyelitis. So w the point I wanted to make is, it's not possible to distinguish infection from metastasis, and in, especially in a situation like this, a case of uh, primary tumor with a single metastasis, it could very well be infection. So the lack of specificity is a very important point. Conventional nuclear medicine in infections has got a battery of, uh, you know, investigation. For example, they have um, uh, nucleotides that can be labeled to leukocytes. They can be, uh, there is a uh, nucleotide MAB which can be specifically labeled uh, the granulocyte, that is the neutrophils. Then gallium citrate is a very age-old and, uh, you know, time-tested technique. Then, of course, nanocolloids. There are so many of them. So, when we say conventional nuclear medicine in infection, we should not uh, think that, okay, this is all old stuff. This is all even now as good and in many cases much better than PET in several situations. To give you an example of a patient with fractured tibia with the RTA due to RTA several months back and now presenting with pain and uh, swelling, uh, you find that uh, here uh, that you know that is the CT part of the PET and that doesn't give you much information but the PET very clearly shows you very strong uptake within the tibia and also a little bit in the soft tissues there and in the fusion that becomes very clear when you take an axial you have no doubt that there is a focus right inside the tibia so this is vertebral osteomyelitis with also some involvement of the soft tissue so PET gives you this kind of uh, information and the ability to, to, to scan it in multiple planes allows you to precisely localize where the problem is. So PET versus conventional nuclear medicine in infections is that first of all in PET you have higher resolution like I told you, you can, uh, you can uh, reconstruct it in whatever plane you want. The, uh, another great advantage of PET is you can just do one scan, one or two hours is that the whole business is over. Most of the other techniques I showed you that uh, in conventional nuclear medicine, the scan can take up to one day. You multiple scans, delayed scans and all that. So that is a major logistic issue. High sensitivity PET has, we know that. And PET also does not get taken up in the bone. So any uptake in the bone, you can say is definitely a pathology and not due to the normal bone. And finally, PET is also quantitative so that it is possible to do serial PETs and know how the uh, treatment responses. Another situation is diabetic foot ulcers. Is osteomyelitis present? A common question that comes up. 
Um, like I said, there is a definitely a potential to separate out infections from uh, analysis, differentiate between bone and soft tissue infections that because of the multiplanar capability, we can say, yes, precisely that there is a lesion in the metacarpal there. But the issue with diabetes is we must remember that uh, the presence of a lot of glucose in the uh, in the bloodstream, as what one would expect with the diabetes, also interferes with the PET because that glucose will uh, compete with the uh, FTG for uh, uh, getting into the cell. So um, there are problems in imaging diabetes, but this is a very good technique if available and the patient can afford to uh, make a diagnosis of uh, vertebral, I mean, sorry, of osteomyelitis in a diabetic foot. Now, uh, even in a patient who is having a, a pyrexia of unknown origin, you know, you have. A pet can help you in this way. It can show you unexpected sites. This is a uh, this is a pet CT, and uh, you see that on the MR, you see that there is end plate changes and enhancement, typical of osteomyelitis. And the patient also had a joint involvement on the left uh, knee. So uh, it can be also be used as a involve uh, imaging on uh, pyrexia of unknown origin. Coming to metallic implants. The metallic implants are one of the issues with any kind of imaging, either CT or MR or conventional X-rays, is that the, the implants themselves interfere with the uh, imaging process. So naturally, uh, one looks to nuclear medicine to save the situation. So conventional um, MDP, that is the technician bone scan, is a very powerful tool. If you have, if you do a bone scan and you find a negative, its negative predictive value is very good. So. Uh, the problem comes when it shows something and then you have to figure out what it is. The literature says that the best imaging modality possible, higher sensitivity specificity in a case of uh, metallic implants is actually the nuclear study which is the indium label leukocyte and technetium sulfocolide. That is two studies done together. What happens is the indium label leukocyte will, will show you areas where the leukocytes are concentrating while the technician sulfocolide will tell you which is the normal marrow. So you basically subtract the two studies, it's possible to tell exactly that there is an abnormal uh, leukocyte aggregation in a particular place and say that that is a site of infection. And we must understand that uh, PET CT has come in not because PET CT is better than this technique, it's simply because PET is now freely available. So uh, just because everybody is doing PET, it doesn't mean in the many situations PET is the best. Is simply that it is more available than the other techniques. But PET, like I said, uh, has got very good sensitivity, single scan, available, is quick, spatial resolution is good. So even with its uh, false positivity and false negativity, still PET is something that can give you clues, especially if you combine with all the other data, the clinical and laboratory. Another situation where a fibular graft done for a fracture uh, shows you can see the how combining imaging is very useful. Well, ultimately, in difficult cases, you know, you, you, do, you cannot have a one-stop solution. For example, in this case, a leukocyte scan has been done, and then you see that there is a significant uptake in the lower part of the femur. Okay, but when you t take the MR in that region, the lower part of the uh, femur, you find that it's absolutely normal. So this doesn't correlate. Now, that, now what happens is in patients like this, there is a, there can be a resurgence of the red marrow in areas next to the fracture. So that must be the reason. So th this is really not showing you the pathology, but a PET scan in this case does show uh, in uh, a, you know up, increased uptake in the fibular graft, uh, showing that there is a infection there. So combining multiple modalities is required many times. And um, I must say, just like this, this is not a PET scan, this is a SPECT scan, that is basically simply the old uh, uh, technetium uh, scan, where, you know, that also shows the infection very well in this particular case. So, one should not say that the older modalities are conventional and not as good. And finally, just two slides are showing the prosthetic joint imaging, a big issue here. Um, again, conventional bone scan is very useful. This is a point I wanted to make. If you do a conventional bone scan in a patient where you are suspecting prosthetic infection, and it is negative, you have a very strong negative predictive value. You can forget about it at that point. But focal uptake, now classic findings is basically that when you have a focal uptake that is uh, seen very well in the joint and in, in the bone prosthetic 
prosthesis uh, interface, you call that a loosening. And when you find a periprosthetic uh, uptake, you say that that is infection. That is how conventionally you're supposed to say, uh, interpret the PET. Um, but the important thing is the pathology in both, that is the actual histopathology in both is very much overlapping. And uh, the initial enthusiasm for saying that if you find an uptake in PET all around the processes, that is infection, is now has to be taken with a little pinch of salt. You know, there is a considerable overlap. Again, interestingly, uh, the literature says that the indium label leukocyte plus techni technician sulfur colloid scan is considered to be, in many studies, shown to be as good or even better than PET. So, again, PET is what we have available with us. So, you find a periprosthetic uptake like that, and that is supposed to be suggestive of infection. So, one has to correlate it with the other clinical data and be a little cautious with this. Again, uh, it is considered that the hip is uh, more accurate than the knee in PET and you see that in this patient also periprosthetic uh, uptake very clearly seen is suggestive of infection. So, And uh, if you want to extend the role of PET to rheumatological diseases, uh, it's a very good way in conditions like uh, rheumatoid arthritis to map the whole body to know where all there is disease and uh, it's also very good in yes, these kind of diseases to to respond it, it, it to is a high time okay, okay. and uh, that's a, that's a, in summary uh, it's a very versatile and effective tool it can be applied in several situations problems remain and i think that's very important to remember we should not think this is a magic uh, tumor versus infection is an issue infection versus inflammation is an issue and the way forward really is to use inputs from other imaging also and integrated approach to uh, a clinical problem is the way you can find the correct diagnosis and PET MR, which is now introduced in India today, uh, is also possibly a very good way forward because uh, MR is very, uh, very ortho friendly. And finally, it's also important for us to remember that before we blame PET for not being as good as we expect it to be, it is uh, because uh, PET is it uses just one aspect of uh, metabolism. So if you can use other um, new PET metabolites that are coming up, which can show you the actual tumor and all that. That is going to probably, that's going to be the future. Thank you very much.